Oh, here we go. Time for one more sequence uh, lesson here today. We've really emphasized the um, arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence the last few days, and, and we've tried to really emphasize how important it is to, to know those formulas for the nth term, and that uh, we've got to memorize those rascals. And, and we're going to finish strong here with one more type of sequence, and it's drastically different than the previous couple. And this one's called a recursive sequence today. And uh, we're, let's go ahead and get our definition out of the way. It says a recursion. Recursion is the process of choosing a starting term and, in per perhaps the most important word in this definition, repeatedly applying the same process to each term to arrive at the following term. Um, what you're going to find out today is that each term is very dependent on the previous term. Um, for instance, um, we cannot find the 100th term unless we first know the 99th term. It's not We can't magically skip or leapfrog from the fourth term all the way to the 100th term today. Recursion is a step-by-step -step process where each term is built and dependent upon the previous term. So real quick, let's get that uh, last statement in our notebook here, the, the asterisk. Um, each term is built upon the previous term. And uh, we really want to emphasize the word previous. Each term is built upon the previous term. Now what I've done here is I've, I've imported uh, two different recursive formulas uh, just so you could see what one looks like. And to emphasize that they may, uh, that these two uh, formulas right here and right here, these are equivalent, although they look slightly different. And it's all about the relationship of these subscripts. And, and anytime we talk about subscripts, we have to emphasize the fact that our handwriting is going to be extremely crucial today as we stay organized and clean and avoid any careless mistakes. But anyway, if they gave you a sub n, okay, the previous term, and that's what it's all about today, the previous term, the previous term would be denoted as a sub n minus 1. Okay, if they gave you the n plus first term, okay, the previous term, and I'm going to start to abbreviate now, would be a sub n. So in order to get the previous term, we're always subtracting 1 from that subscript. Um, let's, if we kind of get outside the box a little bit, if I said a sub n minus 4, who would be his previous term? Well, if I subtract 1 from that subscript, I'm going to get a sub n n minus 5. Um, if I gave you a sub n plus 6, who would his previous term be? Again, we're going to subtract 1 from the subscript and it would be a sub n plus 5 in that case. So understanding the relationship between a term and his previous term and how it's represented is going to be very crucial today. And um, one more thing we want to reiterate, and you can see it from these examples up here that I, that I imported, is that they're going to always give you two things. All right, so they're always going to give you two things, and here's what will be given to you. Number one is going to be the starting value. Typically, it's going to be a sub 1, but I can't promise you that it's always going to be a sub 1. So we're just going to say the starting, whoops, spelling's a little tricky here. So they're always going to give you the starting value. That word right there is supposed to say value. And then number two, they're going to give you what's called the recursion equation or the recursion formula. Either one of those words is fine. Um, I'm going to use the word equation here today, but you could uh, you could replace the word equation with formula. So those are the two things that will be given to you every time. Um, probably sounds a little goofy right now, so I think it's time to jump into our first example and see if we could sort it out. So here's our first example. Uh, the first thing that they mentioned is that a sub 1 is equal to negative 4, and that's what I call your starting value right there. That's the first thing that should always be given to you. And then they also mention that a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 5, and that's what we call your recursion equation. Okay, and that's the second thing that should be given to you every single time. Now it's important to note here that a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term. Okay, so I like to highlight that rascal right there. That is your previous term. And so we're going to say the nth term is always going to be 5 bigger than his previous term, or 5 more than the previous term. Now, as we get ready to solve these rascals, in order to help me stay organized, I construct basically a large table. 
Okay. And here are the headings on my table. The first one is just the value of n. And then the big gap in the middle, we're going to say a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 5. Okay, so I'm just copying down my recursion equation. And then the last thing is going to be my a sub n value once I get it all cleaned up. And because uh, this whole process is very repeated, uh, very iterative, and um, we're just going to continue to repeat the same process over and over and over again. So here's how we get started. The first value of n is going to be a 1. And so and that's the one we, we're going to fast forward all the way across to here. And we can instantly say that a sub 1 is equal to negative 4. All right, because that was, and we're always going to do that. Our first move is going to be fast forward. We're going to draw the arrow all the way across because that, that term was given to us. We didn't have to build or develop that one ourselves. The second n value, we're going to just going to go up in increments of 1, is going to be 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a 2 in for every n that I see in that recursion equation. So it's going to be a sub 2 equals a sub 1, because we already computed the 2 minus 1 in our head, plus 5. And then that becomes a sub 2. And here's the magical part. You're going to grab your previous term, that negative 4. And you're going to bring it down, and you're going to substitute it into a sub 1's place. All right? So a sub 2 is really negative 4 plus that 5. And we clean that up, and we could say a sub 2 is really a positive 1. And now we just need to repeat that process all over again. We're going to say uh, we're just going up in increments of 1. So I'm going to substitute a 3 in for all of the n values. a sub 3 is really a sub 2 plus 5 which implies that a sub 3 is really, and then here's where the substitution takes place. We're going to substitute the 1 in for a sub 2, because that was my previous term. And we clean that up, and we can say a sub 3 is really equal to 6. And we'll do that process one more time. Typically, they ask you for the first four terms of the sequence. Um, so we're going to go one more step. I'm going to substitute a 4 in for every single n in that recursion equation. a sub 4 equals a sub 3 plus 5 which implies that a sub 4 is really 6 plus 5, and therefore a sub 4 is equal to 11. So just to reiterate what happened here, we took uh, once we found a sub 2, we took that value and substituted it into there. Uh, once we found a sub 3 was equal to 6, we substituted that into there. And that's basically the magical step that makes these recursion equations work. Our second example is just a little more uh, complicated, uh, but again, you'll notice they gave you a starting value. They said that a sub 1 was equal to 3, and then they gave you the recursion equation. Um, let's see here. So we know that our values of n go here. We're going to just rewrite that formula. So we got negative 1 to the nth power times 5 times a sub n minus 1, and that a sub n minus 1 represents our previous term. Okay, we're back here on the right screen, um, but anyway, I, would, I just want to put an orange box around that. That a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term. Uh, and I think we're ready to start going here. We're going to let n equal 1 for beginners, That's and we're going to just fast forward because we already know that a sub 1 has a value of 3, so we can skip over all that middle process. And then we're going to go up in increments of 1, so now my n value is a 2, and I'm going to substitute that 2 in for every single n that you see. There's three of them. So it's a sub 2 equals negative 1 to the second times 5 times a sub 1, which implies that a sub 2 is really... Um, now you'll notice anytime this exponent's even, we're going to end up with a positive answer. So I'm just going to, you know, positive 1 times 5 times a sub 1, which in this case is a 3. So we could say a sub 2 is really supposed to be a 15. Notice that it, the most important step there is grabbing that previous term and substituting it into the appropriate spot. All right, let's bump it up one notch. a sub uh, 3 is equal to negative 1 to the third times 5 times a sub 2, which implies, let's see, a sub 3 is going to be, now in this case, that exponent was an odd number, so I'm going to end up with negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5, and then the previous term, a sub 2, had a value of 15. So if I multiply those two numbers, I'm going to get negative 75, and that's your third term. 
Let's do it one more time. We'll let n equal 4. We'll substitute a 4 and for all three n's that we see in the recursion equation. Negative 1 to the 4th times 5 times a sub 3, which implies that a sub 4, let's see what we got here. Now, negative 1 to the 4th is going to be positive 1, because it's an even exponent, times 5 times the previous term. And might have to bust out the calculator here. And my calculator says that 5 times negative 75 is negative 375. Oops, it's getting a little messy. Hopefully you can read that. And that's the first four terms. Now, I'm not promising that they'll ask for the first four terms every single time, but generally that's the most common theme. There might be instances where they ask you for the first five terms or the first six terms, um, and you would just repeat this process uh, just a couple of more times. Our third example is an example where handwriting is going to be more important than ever. They gave you a starting value right here. They said your first term is going to be negative 3, and then the nth term is going to be equal to the previous term, minus the value of n. So it's really important that last n right there is not a subscript. That's just a normal letter. Um, so it's, we're going to have to pay special close attention to that. We'll go ahead and set up our table of values here. I think this is really the key to staying organized and clean and not falling into that trap of making any careless mistakes. Uh, let's see, our nth term is going to be the previous term minus the value of n. And then we'll clean it up and write our nth term. So we could fast forward there on that first line. We already know that the first term, a sub 1, is equal to negative 3. And now the work begins. We're going to substitute a 2 into every single n that you see. And how many are there? There's an n here, there's an n here, and then there's a third n over here that's big. So we're going to have to substitute the 2 into every place. a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 minus 2 which implies that a sub 2 is really the a sub 1 minus 2. We'll clean that up and we got negative 5 for the value of a sub 2. All right, let's bump it up a notch. Let n equal 3, substitute a 3 in for all of the n's, not just the first couple. a sub 2 minus, what should I be subtracting right now? Ask yourself, I'm going to write a sub 2 minus what? This time it should be a 3. And that's by far the biggest bear trap in this problem. We could then say that a sub 3 is really negative 5 minus 3. Clean it up. a sub 3 is equal to negative 8. One more time. n equals 4. Substitute the 4 in for every single place. Don't be afraid to hit the pause button here and try to solve this one just to make sure you got the hang of it yourself. a sub 3 minus a 4. And that implies that a sub 4 is really negative 8 minus 4. And therefore, we can say that the fourth term is really negative 12. And, uh, and that's about as far as we need to go. If you had to go one more term, what do you think it would be? Um, I think we'd end up doing negative 12 minus 5, which turns out to be negative 17. Um, just a quick little quiz there to see if we got it. Whoops, 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 hold on. I think our fourth example is by far the trickiest one today, and we mentioned uh, that they, back on the second slide tonight, that they might try to play with those subscripts a little bit and try to confuse you. And now, in this particular problem, not only did they switch from n to k, which is no big deal at all, it absolutely means nothing, but they did start off by saying that a sub k plus 1 is equal to 2 times a sub k. Now, the key there, identify the relationship a sub k is simply the previous term. That's all it is. Okay, that's, the, that's considered the term that comes right before the a sub k plus 1. So what we need to do is we need to take the previous term, multiply it by 2, and subtract 1 in order to get the next term. So we're going to go nice and smooth here. I'm going to show you how to set this one up. We need to, we need to change our setup just a little bit. We need to be very careful. I'm going to say for my first k value, I'm going to say my first k value is actually 0. And I'll try to convince you of that here in a second. So we got 2 times a sub k, and then the minus 1. The minus 1 is not part of the subscript, it's just a regular number. And then over here, at the top of this heading, we need to say a sub k plus 1. Now, what that means, and here's why I started with 0 this time. Because if I substitute a 0 in for that k, I'm actually going to end up with a sub 1, which is what I wanted, because that was the first term that was given to me. 
and then you just continue to increase your value of k by one unit each time, increments of one, and I'm going to substitute a one in for every single k that you see. So we now have a sub 2 equals 2 times a sub 1 minus 1, which implies that a sub 2 is really 2 times 3 minus 1. And we'll clean that up, and we've got 5. k is now going to be 2, so a sub 3 is equal to 2 times a sub 2 minus 1, which implies that a sub 3 is really 2 times 5 minus 1. And I got an answer of 9, it looks like. And here's a good time to hit that pause button and see if you can finish the next row on your own. And just to make sure we're all on the same page and that we're cruising. Okay, welcome back. Here's how I set mine up. I said my new value of k is a 3, which means that the first, let's see, this is going to say a sub 4 equals 2 times a sub 3 minus 1. Hope you got the same thing. That implies that a sub 4 is really 2 times the 9 minus the 1. And a sub 4 is really 17. So the key here is just grabbing that previous term and substituting it into the appropriate spot. Our fifth and final example of the night is a real wild one. They've given us not just one, but two starting values to help get us started. And then they grow to recursive equation that where a sub n is dependent on both the previous term and the next previous term before that. So um, we're going to have to be very careful as we're organized here, but we have an a sub n minus 1 and an a sub n minus 2, which means we're going back two terms from the current one. But we're going to set up our table very similarly as we have been doing. And let's see what we got here. We're going to say the first value of n looks like a 1. And I could, um, let's see, I want to just repeat the nth equation. I guess I'm going to put that in parentheses just to showcase it a little bit. a sub n minus 2. And then over here would be the final value of a sub n. So we could say 1, fast forwards, because we already know a sub 1 is equal to 1. And then we're going to say that 2, this one also fast forwards because they told me at the beginning that a sub 2 is equal to negative 2. So that was kind of cool. We got to skip both those steps. Now here's where the hard work begins. Let n equal 3. And we have to be extremely careful. We're going to substitute a 3 in for every single n that you see here. So it's a sub 3 equals 3 times a sub 2. And what we're doing is we did the 3 minus 1 in our head to get that subscript of 2. And then over here, we need to do 3 minus 2, which produces a sub 1. What does that imply? It implies that a sub 3 is really 3 times. Let's see, now what is the value of a sub 2? Well, if you look at the right-hand column, we already know that a sub 2 is negative 2. And then what's the value of a sub 1? Uh, again, we know that that's a 1, and now we just got to do a little mental computational math here. Let's see, negative 6 minus 2. I got negative 8. Okay, so we have a recursion of formula that's not dependent on just the previous term, but the previous two terms. Let's try one more row here. Let's see if we can really get the hang of this. Let's substitute a 4 in for all the n's. Just be very careful. Talk yourself through it. This is going to be 3 times. If I substitute the 4, I'm going to get a sub 3. And if I substitute the 4 over here, I'm going to get 2 times a sub 2. That implies that a sub 4 is really 3 times, let's see, what was the value of a sub 3? That was a negative 8, I believe. And then over here, the value of a sub 2 was a negative 2. And again, just a little mental computational work here. Negative 24 plus 4. Looks like it's going to be negative 20, I believe. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, our big lesson on recursive sequences. Uh, the, certainly the Regents exam has uh, enjoyed testing us on this topic the last couple of years. It's been very prevalent. And so we just have to be very clean, uh, patient, and organized. And uh, as long as we're very methodical, I think we shouldn't have any problems getting the correct answer. So hopefully that made some sense, and we will see you tomorrow in class.